In part A of the question, we are supposed to sketch a graph of y is equal to fx. So we're going to take the expression of fx and we are going to be putting this into our graphing calculator. Generating the graph, we are getting something that is like this. And because x is supposed to be bigger or equal to 0 as the domain of this function fx, we will only be taking the portion of the graph that is to the right-hand side of the y-axis. And looking at this portion of the graph, we can see that potentially this graph has a horizontal asymptote. Let's try to work out this horizontal asymptote. And this is when x tends to positive infinity. When x tends to positive infinity, the graph tends to a particular value. So algebraically, this is what we can do. We are going to look at the expression for 4 plus 1 over x minus 1 squared plus 1. And we are going to algebraically analyze what will happen to this expression. Just like what we are seeing on the graph as x tends to positive infinity. So when x tends to positive infinity, this entire x part of the expression here becomes 0. So I'm going to be left with just 4, which means that the entire expression will tend to 4, and this will imply to us that y is equal to 4 is going to be that value that the graph will tend to when x tends to positive infinity. And this is going to be the equation of that horizontal asymptote. And with this, now I think we are ready to draw the graph for part A. So for part A, let's say here we have our y-axis and the x-axis, let's say it is here. We should always have the habit of sketching in all the reference lines first. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote. It is a reference line. I'm going to draw it as a dotted line. And this will be the line y is equal to 4. And extracting only the portion of the graph that is to the right-hand side of the y-axis, we have something that is like this. Here, then coming back down all the way and tending towards the asymptote. From my calculator, we should be able to find the maximum point. The maximum point has a coordinates of 1, 5. And because the graph is bigger or equal to 0, this is going to be an endpoint where it takes up the value of x is equal to 0. So this endpoint here, I'm going to use a solid dot. And the coordinates of this point from my calculator, it is going to be 0 and 4.5. So this is the graph of y is equal to fx. This is for part A. And in part B, we are going to move on to our second function, g. And for this second function, g, what we are trying to analyze will be um, you know, us requiring, being required to state the exact coordinates of two points such that it can demonstrate the fact that g does not have an inverse. So if g does not have an inverse, that means it is not going to be a one-to-one -one function. And one very comfortable way that I think most of us are already having to analyze whether a function is a one-to-one -one or whether a function has inverse is to use the horizontal line test. I will probably not display that in my solution because the question requires us to just simply state the two coordinates of, of the points that are on the graph and they are giving just one mark. Okay, but I think it is still not too much effort for us to just take a quick look at the graph of this because the graph of this, um, I mean, it is just a sine graph. I don't even need my graphing calculator. I know the graph is going to look something that is like this. It is supposed to be bigger or equal to 0, and it's supposed to be less than or equal to 2 pi. So if I were to try, I mean, I look at this graph, I know it's going to be not a one-to-one -one function, right? Because a horizontal line, it is possible for a, po a horizontal line that I'm drawing on the graph to be cutting the graph at more than one point. But too bad. For a random horizontal line that is cutting the graph at more than one point, like for example this, I may not be, I mean, it may not be so easy for us to state the coordinates of these two points. So if you were to look at the graph again, there are actually some points that we do know the exact coordinates of, which are going to be lying on the same horizontal line that will be cutting the graph at more than one point. And I believe that line can be this line. The line y is equal to 0. It is cutting the graph here, it's cutting the graph here, it's cutting the graph here. And this point is the origin. So it's 0, 0. And as for this point, we know the sine graph, right? So it's going to be pi 0. And this point here will be 2 pi 0. So these are the three possible options for me to answer part B. Let me just use the first two coordinates. So it will be 0, 0. And the other point will be pi 0 in the exact coordinates. So this is B, and let's take a look at C also. For C, we want to explain why the composite function gf exists. So for gf to exist, it will be good if we can always make sure that we have a clear idea of how sets of numbers are 
being passed from one function to another function. And one way that we have been doing it on our videos will be to make use of a schematic that is like this. Let me just draw it here. So if I were to be analyzing the composite function gf, it is like me trying to imagine numbers being first passed into f. Then the numbers that comes out from f will be passed into the next function, in this case is g. So for the composite function to exist, we want to make sure that all the numbers that comes out from f, they must all be received by g. So we want to make sure that the range of f is a subset of the domain of g. The range of f we have. Range of f is just a set of numbers that are going to be produced by the function. So if I were to look at the graph, y is equal to fx, which means that the y coordinates that is on the graph will represent all the possible output from the function fx. So we just need to code all the possible y coordinates, which will be giving us the range of the function f. So all the possible y coordinates will be from 4 all the way until 5. So it will be from 4 to 5. It will not be equal to 4, and it can be equal to 5. So this will represent for us the range of f. As for the domain of g, it is already given to us by the question. The domain of g is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. So from observation, I can see that all the numbers here can be within all the numbers that are here, all the numbers that are supposed to be received by g. So we are seeing a subset situation happening here. The range of f is a subset of the domain of g. Therefore, we can then answer the question, gf as the composite function is going to be one that exists. Okay, so we have c. And as for part d, we are going to use a suitably labeled sketch of the graph of y is equal to gx to find the range of the composite function. We are interested in this. We want to find the range of the composite function gf. And since the question mentioned about the graph of G, we should just sketch this graph, okay? So let me sketch this graph. We have already done a quick sketch for it just now. Let me just add in a bit more details to this. So the y-axis, let's say it is here. The x-axis, for example, it is this. So we have our sine graph that is going to be representing G. The domain is this. It is bigger or equal to 0. It is less than or equal to 2 pi. And we do know this point, this point, this point, based on the standard graph of y is equal to sine x that we have known since our secondary school. So for this point that is here, the x coordinate is going to be pi over 2. The y coordinate, the maximum point is 1. For this point that is here, the x coordinate is 3 pi over 2. The y coordinate is going to be equal to minus 1. As for this point, the x coordinate is pi. The y coordinate is going to be equal to 0, which was actually this point that we have quoted. So we have the graph here, which is the graph of y is equal to gx. But how am I going to make use of this graph to analyze the output of the composite function? That is also really simple. What we need to do is to just take a look at this last function over here, and we try to simulate what that is happening to this last function. Let me draw it out here. So for example, this last function here, which is g, is actually producing a set of numbers that is supposed to be representing the range of the composite function gf. So for this to be happening, the key is also what that is going to be going into g in its composite state. What that is going into g is actually what that is coming out from f. And what that is coming out from f, we have already found it is the range of f. So these are all the possible set of values that is going to be coming out from f and going into g. So 4 all the way until 5 will be going into g. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to simulate this on the graph of y is equal to gx by looking at the input into g as numbers that are going to be from 4 all the way until 5. 4 is, let's say, somewhere here, 4. Then 5 is, for example, somewhere here. This is 5. It is bigger or, sorry, it is strictly bigger than 4. So I'm going to use a hollow dot here. It is less than or equal to 5. I'm going to use a solid dot here which means that the y coordinates of all the possible y coordinates of this portion of the graph from 4 all the way until 5 will represent the output of the composite function. So based on this, let's try to look at all the possible y coordinates for this portion of the graph, okay? The highest number is going to be this. The lowest number is going to be this. So it will be just here. So using my calculator for when x is equal to 4 into this, this is going to be equal to negative 0 0.757.
as for this point, the y coordinate is negative 1. So we know that this is going to be the set of values that will be produced by g when this is a set of values that is going to be passed to g through f in its composite state. And that is why by looking at this, right, we can already deduce the range of gf. It is going to be this. It is going to be from minus 1 all the way until this, negative 0 0.757. It can be equal to minus 1, so I'm going to use a square bracket here. It is strictly less than this, so I'm going to use a curved bracket here. So based on this, we can then code the range of the composite function gf, and that is, let me just recopy this, from minus 1 all the way until negative 0 0.757, and it is strictly less than this number.